Okay, let's make a start, I think. Welcome everyone to the next in the uh, seminar series from SPEPA, the Strategic Partnership for Implementation of the Paris Agreement. Uh, my name is Peter Rayner. For those of you who don't know me, I'm the, the, uh, the lead from the University of Melbourne for this project. Um, and we're presenting essentially SPEPA is a, a program between Europe and a range of countries, including Australia, to really build a network and uh, impetus for action for the implementation of the Paris Agreement. And so we've, uh, as many of you will have seen, been presenting a seminar series that ranges from what are the impacts of climate change through to what are the barriers to action. Uh, and now, what are some of the mechanisms that we can use to, to facilitate action? And so in that context, it's a delight to welcome um, Matt Sullivan Kilgore. about some mechanisms for really disseminating information and supporting sharing of action around cities and kind of uh, helping cities to, to build off what each other's doing. Um, it's clearly a critical topic because cities are a driver of so much of the world's emissions and likely to be increasingly so. Uh, and so any mechanism, and of course, a problem always means an opportunity. That means that there are, there are always possibilities around cities for quite strong actions, we think, to reduce overall emissions and reduce their overall climate impact. And um, I hope Matt can talk a little bit about some mechanisms where cities can share information and help each other to make that happen. So Matt, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you very much. I will just bring up my presentation here. So. Uh, thank you very much for the introduction. We really appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak in this seminar series. I know uh, I can speak very glowingly of the role uh, the, climate college, uh, the College of Climate Energy has played. So it's great to be involved. Uh, briefly, in relation to IMBARC, uh, IMBARC Sustainability's role and what we're trying to do, uh, our focus is on connecting to city practitioners, staff within local governments, sometimes within state governments uh, and adjacent organizations, and really try and uh, create more effective mechanisms of change. So uh, the tagline of our director, Paul Brown, is uh, that we're seeking real action. So we're looking for action that uh, genuinely leads to emissions mitigation and to drive us towards the, the carbon reduction targets. As far as our climate program goes, we've been sort of systematically focusing on what we see as weaknesses at a systems level with how cities can take action on climate. So we've done, we've created things such as the snapshots uh, emissions inventory tool, emissions profile tool, which provides free emissions uh, profiles for every municipality in Australia. We've developed a science drive target um, classification tool and system that we've, uh, that's been approved by some international agencies about how to create a relationship between um, the national determined contribution for Australia to municipalities, this kind of work. And this work here is an extension of that. So what I'm going to do is just talk through a platform, like a knowledge platform that we've developed in conjunction with a few other stakeholders, including Innovative Cities, and um, talk through sort of how it works, what role it plays, why is it an improvement, and what we're sort of seeing next for it. Uh, so the, uh, the basis of what we were trying to do is about, um, is comes from the fact that cities have actually been taking action for decades on climate emissions, carbon emissions, but we actually don't still know what is effective. And by that, I mean, generally we're, we're pretty good with understanding actions themselves. So the things that people do that if they're implemented reduce to a reduction in emissions, what I'm talking about is um, the interventions, the, the activities that cities do to increase or drive the uptake of actions within their municipalities. That's not something that's particularly well understood. Uh, so should councils and community and you know, C-level organisations, should they be running education programs or should they say do facilitation programs or should they preferentially target regulation or the planning sector? These kind of insights are really not established known information in uh, in the practitioners in the sector. 
So uh, we were looking into what is going on, basically. And uh, through our work, what we we're identifying was that uh, it's extremely challenging to understand uh, what is like-for-like -like comparisons between activities at cities. So, and that, that simple problem means that the ability to gain insight as to what's going on is uh, very, very onerous. So uh, if, if at all possible. Um, so what this so basically what we're talking about is we're saying that we're creating a system of knowledge of documenting what activities that cities are doing and adjacent players are doing in their efforts to um, influence the emissions trajectories of their municipalities. And through this documentation, we're looking to create a bunch of factors about how the documentation is done that allows us to both provide, both to undertake more effective analysis about what the potential impacts are, to better correlate them to geospatial and regional and socioeconomic factors that might influence um, the effectiveness of these solutions, and to create ways of tying together insights in a way that can be um, informative for city practitioners, as well as other people, such as researchers and um, uh, interregional networks and uh, think tanks and the like. So uh, to go to make progress on this, we needed to dig into a lot of the standards about how cities currently implement their, or how they develop strategies, how they uh, conceive of the activities they're doing, uh, how they describe them, document them, and then evaluate them. And so what we were finding is that there are actually many, many problems uh, along, fully along the chain that uh, lead to challenges with this. So we see a lack of unique identifiers for activities. Um, this is an interestingly, extremely problematic thing uh, because it means that uh, not only does it mean that people are unsure of what's exactly being referred to when they're talking about a certain activity or the like, but also it means that activities tend to blur and meld and change over time and sort of like, and there's no real sort of tracking about how things unfold. There's also a lack of coherent separation of activities. So that what that means is that it's uh, common for documentation around activities to say, suggest that, um, you know, a certain activity will occur and then another one will occur, but it's not clear if they're necessarily different activities or if they're, uh, you know, if they're, they're they're wholly uh, independent or if they're simply one stage following the next. Uh, and this lack of coherent, uh, coherence around uh, the separation activities makes it very difficult to extract um, what is functionally being undertaken by the council or the organization. Um, there's also a lack of clarity on who's implementing and what they're specifically doing. So this really comes down to the core of what is um, the issues for understanding impacts and outcomes and prevents a huge barrier for being able to look to what someone else is doing and uh, feel, you know, be in a position to learn from it. Um, because the, uh, the lack of the lack of clarity around what exactly a city is actually doing when they're implementing certain interventions means that um, it's impossible to understand if the outcomes are, are relevant to you. So uh, these are just sort of a summary summary of some of the many documentation issues. These all naturally come from the fact that there's no inherent understanding that what a city is doing and the way it talks about what it's doing will be relevant or aggregatable or interrogatable by other parties, including other cities. Uh, and so it's not, um, you know, it's not malpractice or anything that this is a situation, but there's certainly an opportunity to improve how this is done. So we have three primary areas in which we um, approach uh, in which say the, the knowledge system we've developed looks to um, tackle these issues. So the first and most significant element is the introduction of a range of categorization of activities. So the key categorizations are classes, stages, actors, sectors, actions, and interventions. So I will briefly just go through them because they're fairly fundamental to how this works. So the classes categorization is um, uh, by in a class what we include is uh, activities and activity is a word that we use for referring to any thing that an entity does in the space. So examples of activity classes are commitments. So if they make a commitment to achieve a certain target, 
uh, actions. So if they themselves undertake something which directly leads to emissions uh, mitigation, such as installing flaring in a landfill. Uh, interventions, uh, which is where they undertake an activity that seeks to increase the rate of action adoption by third parties, such as running an education program around solar. Um, and also includes other categories such as research and review exercises, um, information and data gathering, administrative tasks, and other such categories. This classes uh, categorization is actually really important um, because when you look at other data sets internationally, um, one of the key problems, they, one of the key shortcomings of these solutions, of, of the, these data sets, is that there's a very heterogeneous mix of things that are going into the data sets. So, you know, there might be things such as commitments to international uh, programs, included in the same bucket, bucket as a target, included in the same bucket as, uh, you know, an, an actual intervention program. And they're all differentiated only by text descriptions. And so your ability to sort of step in there and understand it is very challenging. There is some improvements that are happening in this space, but um, this we haven't seen anything of the standard of class, uh, the class breakdowns. Stages is similar, but it just indicates around like at what point of development of a particular activity is, such as is it in a feasibility assessment stage, is it in a pilot, is it in a full scale? Actors identifies who's actually undertaking the activity and can have associated information with that. Sectors is another area where we've done an important amount of work. Um, sectors is where the emissions are coming from, so the targeted area of activity within a municipality. Um, this allows for really good insights to be gained um, in relation to um, uh, what, um, you know, where there's sectors that have uh, a lot of activity being undertaken on them and where there's gaps and other issues. Um, actions, uh, we've increased the resolution about how actions are referred to. So created like a hierarchical tree structure as we have for most of these other things that allows for um, much better navigation and aggregation of actions. So you can get very granular new breakdowns, but also do nice aggregated analysis as well. And interventions. Uh, so these are the classifications centered around um, the the actual activities that say a city would do, say uh, new regulation or policy, um, enforcement, uh, you know, um, uh, purchase and deploy directly, these sort of things, these, these kind of roles that cities can play and other, other entities can play. So the categorization is key. We move to the linkages. So the linkages are really, really important. Um, what they seek to do is to move away from the very siloed type data sets that we've seen conventionally um, where say a city would enter its emissions inventory in one pile and say list some activities in another pile and there really no be no coherent linkage between them. Um, the linkages allow for uh, more powerful analytics and insights, groupings, and uh, recommendations and outputs to occur. And so we do linkages between say emissions inventories, emissions data, other regional data and uh, information about stakeholders and classifications and stakeholders and uh, the activities themselves um, as identified in, in the previous section. Um, so all of this stuff essentially creates a relational system between um, the activities that cities are doing and the other information around them. Another important step of this is the quantification um, element, which allows for uh, where possible or where it's been collected for actual insight into like what is actually being achieved by these solutions, what is the scale of solutions and things to that effect. Um, we very much designed it to migrate from a very low level of quantification through to a high level of quantification, uh, understanding that quantification is not ubiquitous at this point, but uh, it does um, provide, already it provides like some really interesting insights into like what are the relative effectiveness of certain interventions, uh, intervention types, what sort of scale of change is being um, targeted for different sectors and like. Uh, and so uh, through sort of combining these things, we um, our goal here was to create um, a very, very flexible platform that could allow for virtually any sort of activity that city is uh, considering or implementing in relation to uh, carbon emissions mitigation and associated activities. Uh, and but ensure that it's categorizable in a way that allows for really insightful analytics. Um, so just very briefly, some of the structures that we're considering. So the data set itself, so CityCAD is, um, you know, incorporates these kinds of information. Uh, the interfaces are critical, however, and so they're, um, 
So one key element of what we consider to be absolutely core to the solution is the ability of the cities themselves to be able to interact with it. Uh, this is uh, like not simply to be able to interact with it, but to desire to interact with it so that uh, the information that comes out of this is directly and immediately beneficial to cities uh, in the sort of decisions they make and the information they'd like to gather and monitor as their programs are deployed. So um, the interfaces is a key area of focus and development for us at the moment. So we're working closely with um, other, some other key stakeholders in this area. Uh, we also see um, a huge opportunity in developing third party interfaces to the data. One thing that we're really keen to do, which I'll touch upon, is uh, to improve the exchange of knowledge and insights between the research community and city level practitioners. And we see that through this knowledge system, this should allow that to happen in a much more streamlined way. So creating ways for um, researchers in particular to be able to provide insight either to mine data and then independently uh, you know, inform decision making or create tools for information, um, but also to be able to feed back into the process and to, to improve the standard of practice overall. We do have external sources as well. Um, so we do make sure that we're interconnecting to international databases and other sources, international standards, such as the global protocol. Um, we utilize the data sets for snapshot, this national emissions inventory tool that we've developed. Um, but we're really keen for intercompatibility. Uh, we're looking at um, solutions and interfacing uh, to other entities, uh, organizations, data sets, um, processes internationally, say on Canada, and, uh, Finland, a couple other places. So I'm um, very much interested in uh, improving the knowledge sharing capacity. So yeah, uh, ultimately what we see is this as a way of connecting between a whole range of stakeholders. So um, we see as a connecting between uh, the activities themselves. So being able to coherently link activities um, in a way that allows for uh, the um, the previously extremely heterogeneous, extremely unique uh, approach that's been taken to, to activities and be able to like sensically group them together. We see like a huge opportunity here because currently um, the understanding about what constitutes effective activities is usually limited to like a very, very simple assessment as to like whether or not they reduce any emissions at all. Uh, and we'd like to see the standard improved to where it's like evaluating, is this a relatively effective measure? And also does it coherently connect to emissions? We're very, very interested in facilitating the interconnection between cities. We wanna, we would ideally see a dramatically, dramatic increase in the um, interconnection between cities and the activities they pursue. Um, one of the reasons here is because obviously cities are extremely complex um, and what we want, so when we're saying cities as well, I should clarify, so we're talking about like municipalities, so like, you know, not macro cities like, you know, Melbourne and, and Sydney, but like these smaller regions where uh, we see that for genuine insight to be gained, um, we have several problems we need to, to address. So the first is that cities themselves are very complex. Um, they also can differ quite a lot uh, between cities. And um, we actually don't really have a lot of time to solve this problem. Um, so like there's a certain urgency to be able to improve standard practice. Our approach to this is to say, what we need is we need many, many more cities participating in this discourse. We need we need to cast down it much, much wider and to significantly increase the standardization by which cities talk about what they're doing and why they way um, the way they measure and evaluate their outcomes. So uh, like cities themselves, uh, city practitioners aren't typically well versed in statistical analysis or um, like, uh, you know, they don't preferentially seek out uh, you know, statistical level data sets, they very much preferentially go for um, uh, more case study based information, uh, more uh, discursive or like individual city, individual activity based investigations. We still very much see like a, a critically important role here in that, um, you know, city cat and associate analysis can present, um, can do the analysis in the background about what sort of solutions cities should be considering and what their best options are, and then 
summarize or present specific examples that are most pertinent to a city practitioner for the question that they're asking. So we are certainly exploring this, but connecting between cities is an extremely high priority for us. Uh, another interesting area of development that we're um, very keen to see progress on is to um, dramatically improve the way that uh, different levels of government communicate about these issues. At the moment, um, there is a relatively low level of communication about what is occurring, say, at the local government to the state government and to subsequently the federal government levels. Um, this is uh, not due to lack of interest, uh, it's because of some of the complexities we've outlined, the fact that it's quite difficult to get a handle on what is being implemented and quantitatively what is the scale of investment, what are they trying to achieve, what sort of outcomes are possible. So uh, this means that program delivery, program design, uh, iterations on solutions, connecting between programs that, you know, between the state level and local government likes, uh, these are all compromised by the situation and we're very much hoping that we'll be able to see some improvement in practice here. Um, we are also really interested in paving a way to better connect to community. Because of the low level of information that's available about what programs are doing and what the scale of impact are, is and what's sort of being sought, um, the community, so stakeholders in the community are often somewhat disempowered or at a low information position uh, in order to take action. We're thinking that this can improve their information in several different ways. So one is that um, through the standardization of documentation about what cities are doing, it enables communities to more easily track and monitor them. And we'll talk about some solutions about where that's happening as well. But also uh, community action, community level action can be documented in this, in, within this system as well. And it means that community groups and stakeholders can exchange information in a similar manner to city practitioners. So they can learn and optimize their behaviors and preferentially seek superior treatment, uh, superior solutions. Uh, ultimately, where I think we might be able to get to with this is that um, in a number of instances, it probably makes sense to synergize solutions between uh, community groups and community level stakeholders and say local government and state government so that there are roles they're playing in regards to the same solutions, but they're, um, they're able to, uh, to work cohesively um, with a common documentation point and a common uh, mechanism of tracking. Uh, so as I've outlined, we are very interested in better connecting to researchers. Uh, we, um, we understand through our research and directly on this problem is that um, there is a lot of inter incompatibilities in the way that research is undertaken um, in the research community and how cities and city practitioners undertake decisions around program design, program implementation and review. Um, these incompatib incompatibilities makes it quite challenging to synergize uh, work, outputs, insights and like with cities. It doesn't, certainly doesn't mean it doesn't happen, but uh, we see it as an unnecessarily large barrier and we're thinking like through this the sort of common knowledge system, we should be able to create um, a much lower barrier for that uh, interaction. And so we're, we're really keen to explore that uh, and to um, engage more with the research side about how that might, could be usable. Uh, we also, obviously this is a global problem and we think that uh, this sort of standardization will definitely open up the pathway to better collaboration with the world. Um, interestingly, uh, the system we've developed, we have been working in conjunction with some key international agencies, and uh, it does seem to be the case that this is presenting um, functionality that is not, is not currently available today um, with international documentation and databases. Um, so it does present uh, the opportunity to sort of uh, look to expand into the you know, global practice. But at the very least, um, it allows for creating a, fan, a, a sound way of interconnecting practices globally. Um, obviously connecting to the global community is challenging for cities because of the you know, you know, apparent many, many differences between say cities and you know, what their realities are between countries and like. Uh, this, um, we would definitely say that, you know, uh, at least initially the strong preference would be to work um, within say a nation or a region or a state. Uh, just to um, uh, you know, 
to, to avoid having to um, investigate or accommodate um, those geospatial differences. But we're very interested in seeing if we can improve understanding and relevance of activities being pursued in other countries and, and seeking ways to apply them nationally. And we believe that this foundation, um, this system should allow for those kind of insights to be derived. Um, just briefly as well, I'll step through some of the development. I don't know if you can actually see this, but uh, the um, it essentially stemmed from questions that came out through an Einbach collaboration with Innovate for Cities, where um, it was coming out through consultations that there was a systematic problem with the way that insights and interactions with researchers was occurring with cities and that it was like, it wasn't a good degree of compatibility with decision-making processes cities were employing with the sort of insights and outputs that researchers were able to provide. Um, so from that, uh, we developed what we initially called a rapid assessment framework. It was a way of basically quickly pulling in the types of activities the cities are doing for the purposes of getting insight. It was started as a primarily as a research tool. Um, as it was being developed, it became clear that there was a lot of benefits to city practitioners themselves. And so we iterated this solution to make it, to pivot it more towards something that was um, functional from a city practitioner perspective. Um, that has led to a number of iterations. We then implemented projects with the Global Common Minister directly to um, explore that concept. Um, we then interfaced to organisations and data sets such as with CDP and the like, and we've subsequently been exploring functionality interfaces with the likes of Climate Council and other groups. So it's uh, that's sort of its background to date. Um, we are currently providing um, like. Uh, manually developed insights out of the data set, which is um, proving to be informative. We're running pilots with cities at the moment to explore uh, how this information is usable directly by them. And uh, we are uh, pushing on a few other areas of development as well. So I've actually got to the end of the presentation content right now. Um, I was keeping it fairly tight. Uh, there's a lot of uh, additional content and areas to explore here as well. So um, I might ask Peter to comment, but I'm really happy to move into question and answers and potentially to explore other areas of interest. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to move into Q&A and, and you know, because you've kept this fairly tight, feel free to answer fairly, fairly discursively. Um, and um, I'm going to start by asking actually a couple of questions, take advantage of the fact that you finished, uh, you finished quickly. Mm -hmm. um, and the first one is about buy-in. So a lot of these kind of voluntary information sharing systems can suffer a bit from the free rider problem, or at least they certainly risk it. Do you, do you need particular strategies or is the kind of engagement of practitioners around the world, because there'll be a level of, of kind of commitment to action from city practitioners, are they happy to share what they're doing? Um, happy to go through the, the to the effort of of, um, of keeping your information up to date and so on. What's your experience been with the? So the buy-in question is absolutely central to what we're thinking about. Um, there, uh, to me, it's the fundamental problem. Like that's that's the thing you need to focus on, and so. Um, one of the main issues that, say, plagued other systems is that uh, ultimately, when it comes down to the source of information, which is generally city practitioners, um, the systems themselves provide almost no value to them directly. So that means that the actual incentives that city practitioners have to continue to interact with it and to uh, ensure that the information they're putting in is of high quality and relevant uh, and up to date is really, really low. Like they have very, very few uh, incentive signals to drive that kind of practice. They're really looking for minimum compliance. And in many instances, um, the interactive loop between uh, understanding if they've even done it correctly and uh, uh, you know any sort of feedback or information about how to like adjust or update or make it more relevant or correct um, is so slow that um, there's a really large amount of inconsistencies introduced simply by those, those feedback loops and those very analog and manual feedback loops. But ultimately the, the key problem here is the lack of um, direct value to the city practitioner, which I think creates a huge drag on the 
commitment to ensure the data sets remain functional. So from our perspective, that is the central problem. That's the key thing that we want to do. So uh, that means that a huge part of our efforts have been centered around what actually manifests as genuine value to city practitioners. So um, how do they do their jobs? What do they seek as information? What, is, what do they consider to be good interactions, good value, good outcomes, and building that into the system? So, uh, and so that means that, so as long as the, the, the underlying you know, uh, structure of the knowledge system is sound, then um, we can keep our primary, our preliminary focus on city practitioners and ensuring that they are getting rewarded for their interaction with the system um, and then building momentum from there. So we have reason to believe that um, we have good momentum at the moment. So that's, uh, for instance, interactions with uh, running pilots and the like, we get, we're being heavily oversubscribed for participation um, and uh, we're getting very, uh, we're pursuing a couple of different strategies and all of them are getting very enthusiastic participation and engagement. I think cities do inherently um, connect to and value the sort of insights and knowledge that we are broadly discussing, but um, we still need to road test um, like the long-term uptake of interaction and practice. So yeah, it's in progress. Yep. And my other question is, is touching on something you mentioned pretty early in the talk is about the heterogeneity of cities and the kinds of different levers and, mm -hmm. and structures that different cities have. You know, some cities, because of their, their kind of aerial extent and the, and the powers that have devolved to them have considerable power over how transport is managed on the, on the, the, the land that they control and others don't and in others it's shared and it's messy and there's a whole range of, of levels of planning control mm -hmm. that are differently devolved. Firstly, um, can you account for that? Is there, is there kind of descriptive capability in the system so that when people are looking for kindred uh, cities, cities that are, that are properly comparable to their own or looking for, for actions they might borrow from, that they can um, stratify, quantify, uh, to separate cities that look like them. And secondly, um, it, it also strikes me that that might give quite different, um, what's the word I want, is it categories of action that are available to different cities. Uh, mm -hmm. So that it, it, it kind of needs to be noted somehow that this city doesn't do much to drive transport emissions because it can't. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so like, um... Like this is one of the reasons why I was uh, sort of iterating that focusing at the national level initially is a you know so potentially a good strategy at least until better understanding about these interactions because nationally we have a much lower level of variation in the powers capabilities and ownership responsibilities of cities now, if we were to say look internationally because yeah. that, that could be very heterogeneous um, but uh, so. Like, I think there's several groupings that come out of that. So the first grouping is basically um, like, because when we look at mitigation activities, so things that say cities might look to do to mitigate the emissions in their communities, um, it's uh, this, you know, one of the foundational parts of that is what are their communities? So like getting information about like, uh, you know, what's going on there, what's the scale of activity, what sort of commercial breakdowns they have, um, population over density, like, uh, you know, sort of uh, agricultural activity, these kind of things. So that means uh, coherently connecting it to the sectors and the sector activities and the socioeconomic demographics um, is uh, a really important step and it can help with that insight. Uh, it may be the case that, um, uh, you know, that's not adequate or sufficient but it certainly goes a long way to um, uh, understanding about the relevance of certain activities in the municipality. <laughs> the second part, which is like the powers of the municipality, so like their capacity to take action or like sort of levers that are available to them, that is uh, very relevant. It's not like we're, we will explore what pathways are available, but like uh, it's not particularly problematic for the presentation of information or the engagement of cities because they are very aware of their powers and if mm, something yeah. is not relevant to them that that's um, not it, it's not terrifically problematic uh, but the um, 
But I also what I would say is at this stage, um, potentially one thing that's worth bearing in mind is that um, there's really sort of, even at this lower granularity that we have and these other issues with allocation understanding that we've got, um, certain insights start to manifest um, that are fairly, I guess, persuasive, um, even with you know, these incompatibility issues and things, which is things like, um, so what we found is that um, cities in general uh, dramatically, well, have a very um, inconsistent understanding about how the scale of their activities relate to the municipality as a whole. And this has got very important um, implications on how they approach budgeting and program design and collaboration. But also cities uh, generally, we found preferentially favor uh, solutions, interventions that are orders of magnitude worse than um, other options they may consider. Mm -hmm. So like we can do already in a preliminary analysis about say, uh, what is the relative effectiveness of education programs and stationary energy, residential sector, things like that, um, versus say regulatory and policy change um, interventions versus financing versus uh, facilitation programs, that kind of thing. And so we find that um, although the vast majority of programs are going towards uh, like our education-based programs, um, their cost effectiveness is 100 times higher than other levers that we know cities have, such as around uh, adjustments to policy and regulation. So their scale to affect change is being severely compromised here by systematically targeting lower yield, lower impact, um, lower cost effectiveness solutions. So uh, there, and, and because of the nature of some of those solutions, so education uh, programs are you know, very universal. They're very universally available and implemented. So these insights do have cross compatibility in many instances. Great, thank you. At this point, I will put myself on mute and hand back to Angela to curate the Q&A and just remind people, as I think Angela's mentioned in the chat, drop questions in the Q&A. Um, Angela will offer you the option to unmute and read the question. Uh, and failing that, if you prefer not to, or the technology fails, uh, Angela will read the question and Matt can respond. Thanks, Peter, and thank you, Matt. Um, I'll go first with Charles's question, which is about uh, cool roofs and UHIE. Uh, so Charles, if you'd like to unmute yourself and uh, go into a bit of detail about your question, that'd be great. Oh, hi, Matthew. Uh, <clears throat> Charles Rendigs here. Um, just briefly after Tony Abbott blew up my carbon company, I <clears throat> invested in a few levers and technologies and one's a cool roof uh, technology. Mm -hmm. And I just think, you know, across the place with Australia's amazing UV, et cetera, um, that this was an interesting tool in the toolbox. And it's, <clears throat> you know, we, we're doing huge projects now. It's, it's kind of all good, but it's been really hard to engage with cities, uh, mostly around, as you say, like tracking data and getting results. You know, we've done infrared satellites. I've tried to get energy data. You know, it's, it's always a bit of a, um, you know, what, what fits approach since all council areas are different. So I was just wondering, um, based on your platform, et cetera, um, you know, would that be some data set that would be trackable and then shareable across municipalities where you could, you know, you could match results and see, you know, this is Melbourne, this is Sydney, this is Ballarat, this is, you know, and see if this tool in the toolbox or urban greening or, or whatever um, could get a universal uh, acceptance. Yeah, so that that is very much an objective of ours, which is to uh, systematically move towards more focus on cost effectiveness and a standardized evaluation of cost effectiveness for interventions. So mm -hmm. What we're generally finding is that because it's a very low information environment in general for cities to understand what their potential impacts, projected outcomes, costs of programs are, um, it makes it very easy to sort of go with the status quo, go with um, solutions that they've already done before. Um, and it doesn't create like a situation of where there's this, an easy way to um, direct towards better practices. Um, certainly very interested, like, you know, one of our key objectives is to um, increase the expectation about documentation about what's actually proving to be effective as, as regards to mitigation actions. And then 
open the playing field up to external stakeholders, such as commercial entities or research groups, to, to be able to say, actually, no, we have quantifiably better solutions available to you. And uh, so we could, we can certainly initiate those sort of conversations right now, um, because like the, the key problem here is that there, uh, the low level of documentation of other activities means it's not quite that apples for apples comparison, but because uh, like we're basically constructing the pathways to, to facilitate that type of interaction. Um, yeah, and so it's, uh, yeah, so we're really hoping that that will be like sort of outcome. And I think that would be, um, that's a good example about where something makes sense to try and uh, move towards this more quantified approach. Thank you. Nice. Thank you. Our next question is from Caroline. So Caroline, I'll um, ask you to unmute yourself and ask yours if you'd like. Um, and please do either pop any further questions in the Q&A or feel free, given we're a fairly small group, to just raise your hand as well and I'll come to you if you've got a question. Hi, thanks for this presentation. It looks like a really fascinating tool. Um, yeah, I was just wondering, because you mentioned that you are keen to work with researchers, I wondered if there are sort of specific uh, projects or questions that uh, you think would be really that the data set would be really useful to investigate? Well, uh, to be honest, I actually think that there's almost no limit to the sort of questions that we would want to uh, interact on. But in regards to like the sort of the sort of things that we are thinking about currently, so it's really about. Um, so what we're trying to do is we're trying to increase insights into what constitutes effective change um, and what sort of levers should cities primarily be focusing on. Uh, pretty much any sector of activity that uh, you look at are, um, are really problematic for the amounts of data and knowledge that we actually have, we genuinely have in the area. The focuses that I've got at the moment are around um, planning and the potential for planning and planning based regulations and, and interventions to be able to uh, change the long term trajectory of emissions for a municipality. Um, I think there's lots of potential there and I think that that's under that's poorly understood so it's um, so because it's like there's a suite of functions that cities can employ in, re in relation to this from you know, strategic planning, urban planning, environment sort of thing to sort of incentives around individual initiatives and, and developments. Uh, so I think there's, there's a really good opportunity there. Um, we certainly finding that um, there's a very low level of knowledge about what constitutes suitable interventions and practices in the industrial sector um, and uh, how to interact with that in a systematic standardized way. There's very low levels of knowledge about how to manage those types of programs and even what those programs should look like. So that's an area of activity. Um, in agriculture, which I think is very, very urgently needing uh, systematic attention for uh, intervention design, what we find is that we're working with stakeholders across the country um, at, you know, say, the, the local government level and sort of adjacent level, and uh, we're finding that intervention design, so like the way that programs are designed by, you know, local government organisations and the like, uh, to influence the trajectory of agricultural emissions is very underdeveloped at the moment. So there's really like very little structure as provided to it. And uh, so I think the opportunities to explore that are really good. So this is not the technology itself stage. So it's not say, for instance, uh, you know, regenerative agriculture or say uh, feed supplements to cattle or things. It's talking about like how would a city change current practice to see the increase of adoption what should they be seeking to increase and adopt how do they engage with that what sort of mechanisms are proving effective uh really really scaling up outside of uh preliminary technology trials to, to large-scale adoption so there's lots of different things like what's what's the impact and what's the role and function of car share in emissions mitigation practices um how what's the role implication of e-bikes uh, how should EV rollouts be managed? These kind of things. There's like, there's a lot of direct implications, I guess. So I could definitely talk for a while about that. Does that answer your question at all? Is it, um, or have I just gone off track? No, that was great. Thank you very much. Okay. 
Um, the next question is from Sombol, which I'll ask directly. Um, and this is asking whether the data of your analysis collected, sorry, whether the data of your analysis is collected directly from the local governments or whether you also compare to global data repositories such as the Carbon Disclosure, Pro Disclosure Project. And if you do, how different do you think the data is between sort of CDP and CityCAD? Uh, well, thank you for the question, Sombol. Uh, we work very closely with CDP. Um, so we're on the phone to them fairly regularly, and uh, we actually I've I've done exports of CDP data into CityCAD. Um, so we've we, we do incorporate some CD, CDP data in there. Uh, CDP has um, made substantive progress in how they document suitable activities. Um, so historically, it's been um, not very usable, the data for like analysis and insight. Uh, it's been more sort of like more of a focus on like text-based documentation and reporting compliance. Uh, their recent updates to their database structures have significantly increased the functionality of their data set. There's still a lot of um, issues with uh, the genuine ability to analyze the data, but it's definitely improving and they're on a very good trajectory. Um, Ultimately, however, I think the current issue with CDP at the moment is the usability at the city level and the fact and the barriers around that and the subsequent relationship that cities can have to databases like CDP. So I think they have a really important role to play and they definitely are a very loud voice in the international community. But um, there's certainly a lot of opportunity to explore um, new ways that this can work. And yeah, whatever we do, um, we would want to continue to maintain interrupt interoperability and functionality with CDP data, data set and all the data sets as well, such as with the IPCC and the city uh, uh, data portal for cities and other repositories of this information, you know, World Wildlife Fund, that kind of thing. So yeah, that's really, really important. Um, but yeah, that's the pathway to sort of keeping that connection to the global stage. Thanks very much, Matthew. Um, it doesn't look like there's any other questions at this stage. So if anyone does have a question, please feel free to pop your hand up or pop it in the Q&A. Otherwise, I'll pass back to Peter to see if he's got any further questions as well. Yep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask one more. Part question, part comment, and that won't be at all surprised to hear this from me. Um, I guess it, it, this seems like a really good um, suite of tools, really, a really good, good kind of um, framework for tracking actions mm -hmm. at the city level. I wonder also about how one tracks inaction at the city level. So this is pretty good about monitoring. If we do this in a city, the, um, the emissions might change by this much. Um, but knowing what that is relative to what the overall kinds of growth rates and changes uh, seems an important question to me. Uh, so it, it's, there's, a, there's another relativity here about, yes, we need to understand the relativity, relativity of one action to another. But we also need to understand whether this is changing our trajectory by 3% or this is, this is changing our trajectory by 45%. Mm. And it, I'll be interested to see kind of, and I've, I've, I've got to confess an interest here because tracking emissions in cities by proxy is one of the things that, that my research does um, along with, with, with sort of some other groups around the world. But I'm interested to see whether you have um, the ability um, or can, can think about how to track, all right, this is what the overall impact of these, this set of actions is compared to what we think the, 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 the scope to the kind of embodied or driven emissions from cities actually looks like changing over time. Yeah, well, that's absolutely the goal. Like it's, uh, you know, the only, that's the only thing that's worth anything is like if there's, uh, if there's genuine changes, we're genuinely, you know, going to be succeeding at this. A major motivator for us uh, initially for me in sort of looking at these solutions is like the extreme dis like uh, dissonance between the scale and ambition of the sort of activities that cities were considering and the actual scale of the problem. And so creating a way of establishing that relationship was really important. Uh, so uh, ultimately, I actually see this whole thing as just an extremely sophisticated coordination problem. So like the, the key thing that we're seeing here is that um, many stakeholders are not really, they don't not presented the opportunity to focus on what they do best. 
So they sort of work very much in silos. So the amount of information that a city in designing their strategy would employ about what should they be focusing on basically doesn't take into account what anyone else is doing. They just sort of operate in isolation. And that leads to fairly systematic selection of quite ineffective solutions. So the, co the ability to speak in a coordinated way, I think will be quite empowering. Um, I ultimately, unfortunately, I think that we are still at the early days of actually understanding what cities themselves can do. Like uh, we just have not been to date in presented a situation of being able to reliably quantify and document um, the relationship of city level activities to actual changes to trajectory of cities. So very much an objective of ours. Um, what I'm also hoping, which I didn't cover here, but which is very, very relevant, is that um, I'm, I'm hoping that this platform will allow for a genuine and systematic rollout of monitoring and evaluation. So by through standardizing documentation and through backing systems such as Snapshot, which we're increasingly incorporating real localized activity data um, and other like ongoing uh, operational metrics, that means we'll be able to essentially bake in standardized monitoring and evaluation of activities by cities everywhere, uh, everywhere that's participating. And so like that should allow for much more insightful analysis such as you know, tracking of cohort trends and business as usual trends and like sort of extracting out like where we see statistical relationships to certain groups of activities in certain areas. It's not to say that this will be without challenge, but I think like if we're going to do it, to me, this seems like one of the few ways one of the options we actually have. Yeah, that, that, there does seem to be the possibility for some virtuous circles there if, uh, if that information is being passed around. Yeah. Uh, right. So Sombol just asked a quick question as well, which is just about open access. So we are working on a version of open access. So yeah, it's, um, yeah, we're, yeah, which we are really excited about. I just can't wait to see more, you know, independent inquiry and, investigation I think it's opportunities. Sign me up. I can imagine quite a few of us across the research community who'd be really interested in, in, the, in being able to interrogate this in some interesting ways. Mm -hmm. Great, well, that's fantastic. And I think a really interesting um, slice really through the, the interaction of, of improved digital systems and improved information sharing and what we can actually physically do, you know, with a, with a real physical problem about how we change how much of, of greenhouse gases actually finishes up in the atmosphere. Um, it's, it's, it's striking how much information, how much difference information um, sharing and information that can actually empower this problem. Um, there's obviously a whole range of, a whole range of other barriers, but it, it does appear as if we're, um, using non-cost-effective solutions that actually learning about that and propagating the information through the system is really important. So, so you know, congratulations on the, on the tool, um, more power to it. I hope that this kind of really continues to go from strength to strength. Yeah, um, well, yeah, go on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Peter. I appreciate that. Yeah, cool. Right, so thanks very much, everyone. Um, that brings us to the end of this seminar. Please keep a close watch on the events page um, for the, the, the rest of the seminars because they're coming thick and fast at the moment as we come towards the end of the activity. In particular, uh, there will be a three-day kind of summary of our range of activities over the next, in, uh, next week, next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, kind of around this time, um, where in particular, we're gonna be launching two major reports on the kind of impact of energy affordability and the kind of energy poverty implications of the energy transition and on some comparison of EU and Australian experiences around energy efficient buildings, uh, around what their regulatory mechanisms mean, around how things are actually being developed in both, both jurisdictions. And it, it, it's made for some quite interesting comparisons. Uh, some, some things are, the more things change, the more they stay the same. And th some, in some cases, the, uh, the circumstances look very different, but keep a track on that. Uh, and we'll welcome people back to the next few seminars.